Hello and welcome to another edition of Mixed Mowers. In this edition we're going to see how we can fix a surging or hunting problem which is common within the SV or RV150 lawnmower engines, particularly the type with the bulk carburetor. This is common after the lawnmower is put away in the winter season, brought back out in the spring for where the lawns are ready to be cut and you go out, try to start your lawnmower up and the revs go up and down. So we're going to take this carburetor off, we're going to have a little look at it, clean it all up and get it running. This lawnmower was purchased for just around £15 I believe it was, um, off of uh, the local marketplace in my area. So we've got a bit of margin here to make a bit of profit on this lawnmower. If we can get it up and running and give it a nice little service, this lawnmower should sell for a pretty little penny. Additionally in this video you may see my little son Riley Pearson, he may just turn up and come and say hello. He's got additional needs and he's got a rare syndrome called Smith McGuinness syndrome. Yeah, Riley, right, come up here. Riley, right, stand up here. Okay. There he is. And wave, wave to everybody out. Wave to everybody. That's Hi. it. This is little Riley, he's seven years old. As I say, he's got Smith McGuinness syndrome, so he's a very, very unique little child. So he'll be no doubt popping it in and out and asking me questions every five seconds what I'm doing, how we're going to fix this. So let's get down and dirty, let's get this lawnmower fixed, up and running, and let's get it sold. Oi! Okay, and here's the lawnmower in question. It is a Power G, which is your typical um, B&Q style lawnmower, I suppose, or screw fix. Um, they're relatively cheap. They go for around about seventy odd pounds, so they're not they're not uh, an expensive lawnmower by any state, but. Either way, we only purchased this for £15, so we have a, a good little margin there to make a few quid. It comes with all the height adjustment, it comes with a grass bag that looks pretty much nearly new. In fact, it, it doesn't look like it's done a lot of work full stop. The first thing I like to do, obviously, is just double check that the, the blade is on correctly. So let's just flip the storm off on its side, Riley. Mind yourself, flip it over on its side, have a quick little look. Yes, and the blade is in the correct position and it's on the lugs on the blade boss so it's exactly where it needs to be so that's good so let's just fire this lawnmower up so we can see exactly what it's doing and to give you the diagnosis what a hunting lawnmower sounds like the revs are going up and down which tells me it has a carburetor issue so let's get it up on the stand let's get it stripped off taken apart and looked at and then hopefully we'll be able to turn this lawnmower around very very quickly and get it up and running and sold so let's get on with it right so now it's up on the stand First things first, before we do anything, work on any lawnmowers or anything mechanical, we must remove the spark plug HT lead. And I'm also going to remove the, the spark plug. This isn't a necessity, but literally I haven't had a spark plug out, so I want to see what condition that's in as well. So just to remove that very quickly. Now we know that engine cannot start at all. It just looks very, very oily. The plug looks relatively new, but I'll give it a good clean, see how that comes up, but I should probably be keeping that one. Fantastic. So now we have the lawnmower in a safe position where it can't physically start even if it wanted to. We can now start to remove this um, housing on the top just to gain this access. You don't always have to remove these, but I'm removing this purely so you guys get a much, much better view. So there's just three screws on the top. Once they're loosened off, yep, just remove the fuel cap. Pull the pull cord down off of the, off of the arm, and then that whole assembly will lift off and keep that nice and safe. And now just replace your, replace your fuel cap. Right, step two of the process. Again, this doesn't have to come off, but it just gives you a much better view. But I'm going to remove the pull cord assembly and it's just three 10mm nuts on the top of the unit. Just loosen them off. Just 
just like so. There's three of those. Just going to take those off, and this will remove your pull cord assembly. Very, very simple. They go to one side, and then just lift off your pull cord assembly. It'll come off in one go, just like so. Quick and easy. Okay, the next step is to remove the air filter cover box. Just clip at the back, just that just unpops, and literally the whole air filter cover will slip away. And there's no air filter at all in this engine. So that could be another reason why this engine was also hunting. It's very strange how the air filter is missing. These come with just like a square foam one. In fact, I've got some in the shed. I'm sure I have. I've got some in the shed. That will do. Here's one here. This is what they look like, just a square foam, and they just sit inside. So I do actually have a spare one. It wants blowing out with an air compressor, but I can, I can do that. That's no problem at all. So now we can see in more detail the carburetor and where the springs go. At this point, I'd recommend taking a photograph on your smartphone of where any springs or linkages go, because it does get a bit tricky. Once you remove it, you may forget where they go, but pretty much it goes on the front of the arm and down to this linkage here on top of a carburetor arm and that arm then goes down to the gardener spring so there's only one spring just there and there's a little tiny spring just here I don't know if you can see that there's a little tiny spring just sat underneath this gardener arm just here so we need to make sure we don't lose any of that Rightio so now the uh, carburetor has been blown off the top so it's got rid of all the excess dirt and grime we've got to remove these three nuts just here these should be 10 mils or 3 eighths. There are 10, and we're just going to start to slacken these off. This will this will loosen off the air filter box cover, and also take the carburetor off as it goes. That one are quite tight, and let's just slacken those off. And they go into my nice little magnet tray, so I don't lose any bits or pieces. Now when this comes off you'll find on the back of it there's an air breather pipe so make sure that that comes away and is also kept nice and secure there it is just there in fact that can say where it is that's quite happy so we have a gasket there which we want to try and keep if we can i'm not going to try and take it off because it, it'll probably break so with that we are now in a situation where the carburetor will now just drop away but before we do anything else i just want to clamp off the fuel line and I use just medical forceps for this. Just find where the fuel line stops and then clamp that down into position. Actually got my glove, clamp that down into position, just like so. Right, with the fuel line now clamped off, we can now undo this little tiny clip on the side of the carburetor and just slowly work that back off of the carburetor tube itself, inlet tube itself. It's a bit fiddly, but it will come. There it goes there, it's just dropped off now. Right, let's try and get this breather pipe off, off a, off a primer bulb. And just gently, gently, because it's all plastic, so it just pops off like so. Now we want to remove this fuel line. Just literally works its way off of the pipe just like that okay now with the fuel line taken off that can now be secured and that's being clamped off so I'm not going to lose any fuel there with the primer bulb now removed we can now bring this carburetor out out the its situation and just gently rotate this carburetor so that it comes off of the linkage you're seeing that just off this linkage here just rotate it round and take the carburetor off. And that's what we're after, we're after this carburetor. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm now gonna put a carburetor to one side. We're gonna drop the uh, lawnmower off the table and then we'll get down and have a quick little look at this carburetor to see how dirty it really is. Right, with a carburetor on the table now, you can see it's leaking a bit of fuel out, out the top, which is quite common. What I like to do is just put this little tiny tray just inside it so we can catch any fuel that comes out 
and we can then also take a reading on roughly how dirty this carburetor really is. So what we want to do now is we want to remove the two bolts at the bottom. Now I prefer to remove this one first on the side and then the other one. This one is one you allow for fuel to flood the carburetor when it's actually starting. But it's very tricky to actually undo these when when you're when you've undone this one. So let's undo this one first. And these are 10 mils. And they're normally on there very tight. So that's the first one. And then you can then crack the second one. Like so. So let's just undo those. Pop that into the tray and also pop the, uh, the second one into the tray. And then we can then remove this carburetor bowl. And as you can see, very slightly, there is discolored, very small granites of, of substance in there. It's, it's minuscule, but those are the sort of other things that will stop your carburetor from working. Okay, so you can take that apart. And then also this little tiny pin here, that needs to come out also. This is that one. That will then release your float. And then inside there, you'll also then find a very small needle. The next thing to do is actually get inside this carburetor into here. We need to take this main jet out. And also there's a jet on the top side here, which I'm also gonna take out as well. Once these are out, I'm gonna blow and compress all of these so we can get it nice and clean. Right, let's get rid of all that dirty old fuel. So the first thing we need to do is we need to put these bits to one side. In fact, I might put more inside the bowl so I don't lose any bits and then just put them in my magnet tray. Be careful not to lose them out of the bottom hole there. And they go into my magnet tray so they're nice and safe and sound. Now the next thing to do is to, is to remove this main jet. Okay, now these need a flat-headed screwdriver and they can be troublesome and tight. Now it's best to make sure you have a good fit. Try to tighten just a touch and loosen it and just slowly work it out. There it goes. And just go gentle because if you snap that off, then we're in trouble. But this one's come out fortunately, so we're lucky. Once that's come out, like so, we can then look at the main jet itself. Okay, and it looks like little Riley has come to have a little look at what we're up to, which is good news. Yeah. So we've removed this, this main jet, and inside here is a, there's a little tiny hole, and that's, that's plugged. So what we need to do, we need to unplug that hole to make sure that stuff is, uh, fuel is running through that. And I've got a little device here, which I use, which helps to clean yeah. carburetors. What's that? This is a special filing system, Riley. It's got, it. it's got tiny, minuscule, Why? little, coming up a bit so we can see you. That's just there. Okay. Tiny, minuscule little files. Why? And all we're gonna do is just gonna put that straight through the hole. Why? Like so, so that the petrol can run through it. That's a little bit small, that one. Yeah. I'll show you in a bit when we get it up and running. We we'll get the next size up, which I'll is do that. that. You can do it in a minute, can't you? Oh, I'll do it. Yeah, you can definitely help me. I'll do that. Hang on. That's what just get this one out first and try and push that one through again. That one's just got it. That's perfect, that one. So we can now just start to file that hole through. Like that. You see that, Ruddy? Yeah. Yeah? Where? Right, you hold that one. Okay, fantastic. With that, with that one done, we can now look at removing this jet here. Now this is important, this is a mixture jet, so we need to make sure we know exactly where this one sits. So currently it's down tight. I can't move that left or right or left, so let's try and move it round the other way, just so we can remove this jet out. That's it, so it's definitely, it definitely goes down tight, that one. So let's remove that one. That one's important to make sure it goes back exactly where, yeah. where it came out. And that jet can come out of there like so. And again, we've got holes all the way through this carburetor, through this jet as well. Nothing through the top on this one, so we want to just make sure. Riley, pass some files to Daddy, please. Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. Thank you. You're very helpful. Why? Oh, I'll do it. Yeah, you're going to do it, yeah, in a minute. And then I want to get another file and just run these files through, through this jet to make sure that all those areas are clean. Once these are done, 
I'm then going to get some carburetor cleaner and spray them off. Right, now Riley's going to clean my lawnmower off for me, aren't you Riley? You want to give it a nice little... Hey, why can't I get off? Yeah, we're recording it. Um, we're going to give it a nice little I clean off. Can you go and give my lawnmower a clean, please? Yeah, have a little look. And I'm just going to spray this, there. spray this fluid through this main jet. I'll do it. You can't, this is chemicals, unfortunately. It's water. No, it's like water, but it certainly doesn't taste Are like you? water, I can assure you. And the same with this one. It is just water. Give that, it is an, water. Give that another little spray off. Next, we want to make sure we spray through the inlet and down through the main jet, down through here. And there is some residue coming out of there. And then round this side here into this mixture jet. Turn it round. Two more holes here to do. One here. That'll come out the, the main jet housing. And one here to do. That comes out the top. So that's now the carburetor fully cleaned. And as you can see there's a bit of grass in there. We'll take that out. We don't know grass in there, that's for certainty. Where do that go? There it is. And just one gentle spray all the way around inside. Just like so. And then we move on to the next step. So with the carburetor now cleaned, you can now see this was wiped clean initially. You can now see we're getting specks, specks of stuff coming out here, 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 over here and here. And the, still some real small stuff just down within, within the fuel. That was all what was inside this carburetor. So we know we have made a, an effective job by cleaning this carburetor off. So I'll just clean this area one more time and then we're going to look into cleaning the main jets itself. Right, so we've already done the main jets. We now have to look at cleaning this, this bowl chamber out. Put your finger over the back of the hole and just put some spray cleaner inside. Give it a bit of a swirl around. Let it run out and then with a clean rag, just get inside there and clean the area out. And as you can see, we're getting bits of dirt and grime coming off of that. I think this is just a, this is a question of just literally stagnant fuel. Just need to make sure that the actual float itself is clean, which it's not. It's got bits of dirt on it, so we're going to clean that off as well. Give that another quick little spray. That can go inside the bowl. Give the needle a little clean. And a bit of a wipe. Uh oh. Just like that. Right, so now the carburetor is nice and clean. It's had all areas cleaned out. In fact, I didn't clean that area just there, that one there. One on the other side. Let's give that a clean out. It's so important not to forget any areas. Okay, that's good. Right, we can now reassemble this carburetor. So the first one we need to do is put this mixture jet back in, and that one in the top, just in there. And we need to do that, up, that one up tight. Perfect. The next one we have to do, we have to put in this main jet, which has had the hole cleared through and filed, so that you can see through that now. That's now completely clear. That goes in the top of the main jet housing. Give it a bit of a wiggle, and then screw that one down. It doesn't have to be overly tight. It has to be really snug, but if you go too tight, you're just gonna snap, snap the main jet, because it is only a, like a brass fitting. So just snug it down. I'm happy with that. Okay, the next thing is to bring in the float. Now these floats have a little tiny pin inside them. And they just sit inside the carburetor and that's what pushes against, against that float system just there. I don't know if you're picking that up. So the little tiny pin, there it is, it's minuscule. That sits inside that little chamber just there. Plop. Whoop. Dropped it. You're laughing at me, Riley. 
that goes inside there and then the next thing bring the float in that sits in inside the two brackets pick up the pin and then the pin goes through the two holes line it all up together it's a bit fiddly fiddly line them up and that sits in like that now a good way to check see if it's working is by blowing through this nothing goes through if you lift the float up yep that's working fine okie dokie so we've now got the carburetor all clean we're now going to reattach the bowl now what's important with this section is you must remember where the fuel came in and the fuel came in from this this tube here so we want to make sure that the the bolt that you can that allows you to flood the carburetor is on on the front of the mower just there so what i'm going to do i'm just going to put in the big bolt first and then i'm going to put in the small bolt after these are both 10 mils i'm then literally going to snug them both both home like so and then i'm just going to nick those two up Don't over tighten these because if you do, this one in particular, that will shear off and that will snap the housing to the main jet and then you'll be looking for a new carburetor up there. That's not good. Okay, so this carburetor has now been cleaned and fully serviced and we're now in a situation where I'd like now to get the lawnmower back and start to fit this carburetor back on. So let's do that. Right, with the lawnmower back up, we can now start to fit this carburetor. But before we do that, Hi. I think it would be a good idea because of the because of the fuel coloration we had within within this lawnmower, I'll just want to remove this this fuel from this tank because it looked particularly dirty. So let's just do that now. Let's remove the forceps and drain that fuel out. And as you can see, that fuel was really, really brown in colour. It's not the colour fuel should be. In fact, it's even looking a little bit like it's got oil in it. It's looking a bit like it's got two-stroke mix in there, so that could also be the issue. Look, it's looking very, very red. So that gives me a suspicion that it's actually had two-stroke oil put in, inside this, which is not a good thing. Let's just drain that out. I'll put you up in the air a bit more so we can see better. I do it. That's it. You can do it, Riley. Yeah, you do it. Up you go. Yeah, that's enough. Lovely. Yeah, beautiful. That's enough. About there. I do and it. Screw this one here for me. This one. Okay, that fuel's now draining. I'm just going to take the fuel cap off just to get rid of any vacuum. That's it, loosen that off. And we're going to drain this tank, drain this tank right off. Why? Because if you look at the petrol, come around the other side, Riley. Come around here, look. Look, come around here so we can see. What colour What colour is that? Is that petrol? Water. What colour is it? Well. It's like a brownie red colour. see. And it should be, it should be clear. Why? So I think the gentleman that had this lawnmower has actually put in two-stroke fuel. Let's get it drained and then we'll move on to the next step. Oi! Okay so that fuel has now been drained out fully and I've also put some fresh fuel back in the top just to swell out anymore but as you can see that is definitely red in colour so I would say this gentleman has put in two-stroke fuel into a four-stroke engine so that's not good at all. Let's get rid of this fuel. I always keep the old fuel just for cleaning dirt and grime off the tops of carburetors that sort of stuff just so it's a, it's a good cleaning agent so I'll, we'll keep this fuel it won't go to waste and then we move on to fit this carburetor right so now we're going to fit this carburetor back on into where it belongs and don't forget the inlet was on this side and the primer bulb was on this side so let's now fit this back on and in place and we also want to fit this linkage back on the top of the carburetor arm just here if that might premeditated that slightly that goes back onto the onto the carburetor arm there like so that linkage falls onto there then the primer bulb excuse hands the primer bulb section pipe fits onto that just there yeah that's it right you're right so that's yeah. it so that's now in place yeah, yeah. What we now need to do is fit Where? this little tiny clip back on the on the housing. I use my forceps if I can, just to wiggle that on into place. 
could do. Put my clip on. I see. It's there, look. See? There it is there. Where? Just there. Where now? We're now going to fit the Where? The long bolts. Where? Back on to the carburetor. Like so, these are the long bolts we took out. There's three of them, too long, too short. They go through the air intake cover and then through the carburetor itself, like so. Do it. Yeah. I see. You can see in a minute, buddy. And then I just want to get my 10 mil socket. And just want to snug, snug them home. Make sure your carburetor is fitting properly. Just going to snug them home. So there's one. Yeah, and two. Then, yeah we had two, didn't we? That's right. Because right. we did. And there's the second one. Just going to get my ratchet and just nick them up. They don't have to be super duper tight, they just have to be on there relatively tight. Bye. But if I don't fuel leak out the back, Why? don't forget to attach your fuel, your air breather hose on the back of the box. Why? And then just have to attach one last bolt, which is a smaller one, which goes onto the front. Just like so. Next we move on to refitting the pull assembly. Right, so we've now got our pull assembly and that literally sits on top of this housing just here. Three there. We need our three 10 mil nuts that go with that. In my magnet tray and just loosely, loosely fit them. Again, they don't have to be colossally tight because it is all plastic so as long as it's on the snug that would be sufficient. Next we'll move on to refitting the cover. Here's the cover and that literally just has to have the pull cord attachment pulled through ever so slightly. It's a bit tricky but it go and then also remove the fuel cap also. That then sits over top of both of those. Refit the fuel cap and then tighten down the screws. Right, so now Riley has done a fantastic job in cleaning this air filter off for me. So it is a second hand part, but that's going to fit just in there as it should do. That's fantastic. Well done, Riley. And we're then going to reattach the air filter box. Where? Just there. You can see, yeah. Don't take it off. There you go. A towel. It's like it's a sponge. Ah, my pop. Okay. Ready? With the air filter box now in place with filter in, all I'm going to do is put some fresh fuel in, clean the spark plug, and refit the spark plug and HT lead, and then we'll see if we can get this lawnmower working as it should do. Okay, so hopefully you can hear me. The wind has picked up slightly, but we're now. In a, in a position where we can now start this lawnmower hopefully i haven't tried starting it yet i have literally just checked the oil it wanted just topping up by about 100 mil if that um so i've topped that up i haven't primed it or anything so let's see it may smoke and fail to start initially but once the fuel gets through hopefully it will cure this hunting issue so let's see how we get on Yeah, let's see.
a fantastic result. The lawnmower I did hunt initially, but that's probably just where the fuel was coming down into the carburetor itself, so it needed just to fill itself up with, with fuel. Um, it is a bit smoky, um, but then that's what happens when you fill up a lawnmower that should have, have plain fuel, and you fill it up with two-stroke oil mix. It's, it's never, it's never, it's never gonna gonna work like that. So uh, what I'm gonna do now is get a piece of string, tie this dead man or hand, dead man's handle back. Okay, so that was fantastic. So it does look like the previous owner actually filled this lawnmower up with two-stroke fuel, which is the wrong fuel for a four-stroke engine. It should have had the plain fuel in it because it has a single one. But either way, the lawnmower now is up and running. I have now since run it for a further five minutes and it's no longer smoking. I've also done the blade, which should give it a new sharp edge on it. So that's all nice and sharp, ready for the year. This lawnmower is now in up and running condition and it is pretty new actually, it's not that old, it's a 2015 um, edition, so it's only done a couple of years service. So thank you very much for joining me and Riley on this edition of Mixed Mows. We hope you enjoyed this video and hope you find it helpful. Please look out for my other videos and if you did find it helpful, please like, subscribe and also touch the bell notification so that when I release any more videos, you'll get a little buzz to say I have done so. Thank you very much and see you on the next episode. Do you feel the power?